Hi guys! In today's video, I am going to take you through my ideal day in Guanajuato. So if you find yourself in Guanajuato City and you only have 24 hours, the first thing you must do is weep that you don't have more time in Guanajuato. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it happens. I understand. Let's make the best of a bad situation. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm kidding guys, it's fine. If you're new to the channel, I'm Erin. I just got back to the United States after living in Mexico for a year with my husband and my daughter, and most of that time was spent in Guanajuato City. That was our home in Mexico. And I have just released a guidebook, which is basically our entire lives in Guanajuato distilled into one book. This book is going to take you to all of our favorite spots. If you, basically, if you had come to visit us in Guanajuato, these are the places that we would take you. This is the stuff that we would want you to see. And along the way, I share a lot of memories and stories about what it was like living there and the kind of personal attachments we had to the places that I suggest you go check out. So anyway, if you are interested in that, I will leave all the information in the description box below and probably floating around up here. There will be a link that you can click as well. And I hope you love it. But for now, let me tell you what I think you should do if you are in the city for just 24 hours. Okay, first things first, breakfast. Head on over to La Vie en Rose, which is a French restaurant that everybody loves for brunch. The dining rooms are airy and pretty and bright, and the menu is pretty small but reliable. So we always love the Croque Madames, which is like an open-faced sandwich with ham and cheese and fried egg and it's delicious. It comes in a super hot pan so do not do as I did and go to take a picture of it for Instagram and burn your arm, okay? Um, <laughs> after breakfast, head on over to the theater and stare in awe and wonder at the beauty that is Teatro Juarez. And uh, if you get up really early in the morning, you might want to do this before breakfast because the earlier you get there, the fewer people will be in your photos. <laughs> All right, so after you're done gawking at the theater, you're going to want to find the funicular, which is behind the theater in an alleyway to the left of the theater if you're looking at the building. And you're gonna ride that up to the Pipila statue. So here is where you're going to get the classic, iconic Guanajuato from above photos. It's everybody's favorite photo op in the city. Um, so hopefully you are here midweek because weekends get pretty crowded up here. It's funny, Jesse and I, we could see the people the statue on our walk from our house down to the center and you would always kind of glance up there and on weekends you could always see like the crowd kind of forming at the base of the statue. Okay, so after you've got your photographs up there, come back down into Centro and have some lunch at Truco Siete, which is right around the corner from the theater and is just a very solid, traditional Mexican place where you can get enchiladas mineras, which is the signature dish for Guanajuato. It is enchiladas with um, potatoes and carrots and chicken and it's, it's really good. Um, the name means miners enchiladas because Guanajuato is a mining town, a silver mining town. Okay, after lunch, head out of the restaurant and you're gonna walk you're gonna walk past the Basilica, which is the giant yellow church in Plaza de la Paz, 
Take some pictures there and then keep walking. I'm gonna head to Plaza San Fernando, which is my favorite plaza in the city. It's so pretty. There are pretty little trees around that kind of shade the shops and restaurants around the edge of the plaza. And there's a big, beautiful fountain and a big square where if you are about three and a half, you will really enjoy chasing the pigeons. <sighs> and from that plaza, you're going to head on over to the plaza next door, uh, Plaza de San Roque, which is uh, near another big church. And you're going to find a Estacion Gelato for some gelato. This stuff is so good. They make it with really fresh, natural ingredients. Uh, local ingredients like strawberries from Irapuato, which is an, another city in Guanajuato State, uh, Mexican vanilla, it's just so good. They've also got coffee, so if you're needing a bit of a caffeine boost, here you go. After you've got your gelato and you've snapped some pictures of the church and the uh, other plaza, you're going to keep walking through Jardin Reforma, which is a little plaza-like area and you're gonna head to the main street out that way and you're gonna take that main street up to the Mercado. Uh, Mercado Hidalgo it is big and chaotic and crazy and wonderful and you're gonna want to give yourself some time to just kind of wander. The bottom floor is mostly food and upstairs are souvenirs so Grab some souvenirs upstairs. Look for these little candies called Glorias. Glorias de Cajeta, I believe. They have like a red wrapper. And they are Cajeta and nuts. And they're a local specialty. They are so good. I brought a whole bunch of them home with me when we left Guanajuato and like half of them were gone by the time I gave them out to anybody. So you're going to want to make sure you stock up on these, you know, unless you're like allergic to nuts or something. After the market, if you've got time, grab a cab from outside in front of the market and go to the Mummy Museum. It's one of those things that some people love it and some people hate it. So. I, I loved it, but I totally get why people hate it. So check it out if you're interested. If you're not, totally fine. Skip it and go to La Clave Azul, which is a little hidden bar off of Plaza San Fernando. Look for the little alleyway that kind of looks like it's not going to go anywhere or you're worried you might not fit. <laughs> you will. It's okay. Go through there and it, the alley opens up and then you find La Clave Azul on certain days between certain times, which is reportedly between 2 and 5.30. You can get snacks with your drinks and they're delicious and wonderful. Um, you also, when you're there, you feel like you've found a secret place. And it's, it's really cool. It's one of my favorite spots in the whole city. All right, so after your afternoon of sightseeing and wandering, you are going to be hungry. You're going to want to head to Los Campos for dinner. This is probably Guanajuato's most famous restaurant. Everybody will tell you to eat here because it's wonderful. So if you've only got one day in Guanajuato, I do think you should eat here. It's a tapas restaurant. Some of the menu items are tapas and some of them are full entree sized portions. Your, um, your waiter can help you distinguish between the two, but even the tapas portions are super generous. So we always ended up ordering too much and that was completely fine with us. After you're done with dinner, head out to Plaza Baratillo, which is right outside of Los Campos. My favorite chocolate shop is right there on the corner. Uh, it's called Chocolate, and they've got the coolest truffles in there. And you can have really basic, normal, quote unquote, normal truffles. You can get your, you know, uh, caramel and strawberry and all that stuff. Or you could also try the really wild ones. Like we had a, a really crazy um, blue cheese truffle. They've got 
Of course, you know, tequila and mezcal. They've, they sometimes have chapulines, which are grasshoppers. Um, there is a balsamic vinegar one. So anyway, they've got a lot of cool stuff there. And after that, we're going to head for some drinks at Mezcaleria La Infiel, which is not far from Plaza Baratillo. And this is one of my favorite spots in Guanajuato. There's a cafe out in front, and then in the back is the Mezcal Bar, and it has kind of a hidden speakeasy style to it. And locals love this place because it's not overrun, um, it's pretty low key, you can hear what you're saying, so it's a great place to go if you're on a date and you wanna actually talk to the person you're with or you're going out with your girlfriends and you wanna just chat. So you can get some mezcal there or mezcal cocktails or you know whatever else you want. Fun fact about the mezcaleria is that it's called La Infiel, the infidelity, because the property that it is built into was once owned by the Carcamanes brothers. The street outside is uh, Callejón Carcamanes, and the brothers fought over the same woman. One of the brothers was married to this woman, and the other brother and she were having an affair, and when the husband fell, found out, the story is that he you know, flew into a jealous rage and murdered them and killed himself right there in the spot where the cafe and the mezcal bar are today. So when you get there, look behind the bar for three lighted skulls, and you'll now know why they're there. And that's it. That would be how I would spend the day in Guanajuato. If you're not already, go ahead and hit subscribe and click the little bell to get notified of new videos. Expect more of these videos about Guanajuato to be coming because I've got a lot to share with you. I'm so excited. If you've been around here for like more than five seconds, you know that I love Guanajuato. A huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. I love chatting with you. If you want to join in on the conversation, head over there and I'll see you guys later. Bye.